My name is Tristan Green. I am an RIA instructor working for Seafarer Training in Ionian Islands. We all know that finding the perfect spot to drop anchor and relax is a big part of the sailing experience. But before you drop overboard, there are a few things that we need to consider and that would be the seagrass meadows. In this video, we're gonna talk about why seagrass is so important and why your anchor won't hold in this habitat and how to safely drop anchor where seagrass is present. Now, what exactly is seagrass? It might look like underwater weeds, but it's actually a flowering plant crucial to our coastal ecosystem. Seagrass meadows stretch across the seabed like underwater gardens, providing a vital habitat and breeding ground for fish, shrimp, and other marine life. They also act as a buffer against coastal erosion. And believe it or not, they're champions at capturing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And in fact, seagrass meadows can bind up to 35 times more CO2 than a forest on land. The main types of seagrass in Greece are called Posidonia, or Poseidon's beard, and is common across the Ionian and Aegean. You can see seagrass meadows as darker patches underwater in depths of up to around 10 meters, especially when contrasted against lighter sand. When looking off the boat, polarized glasses cut down the glare of the water and allow you to see the meadows a lot easier. In these two clips of Palaros and Nikiana, you can see where the meadows are located and the sandy areas between them. The seagrass leaves are quite smooth. Unlike sand or mud, where an anchor can dig in and get a good grip, the anchor can easily slide over the seagrass, offering little resistance. And in light winds, you might feel like you're anchored correctly, but as soon as the breeze picks up, your boat will start drifting. If the anchor does grip, it'll probably be on the root systems of the plant, which can easily become dislodged suddenly under the pressure of the yacht, again leading to the yacht drifting. The environmental impact of yacht anchors is also a huge concern. Imagine dragging a heavy anchor and chain across a delicate underwater garden. It's like ripping up flowers in your grandma's prize-winning rose patch. The anchor can tear up the seagrass leaves and damage the root system, hindering its growth and ability to thrive. Some popular anchoring spots in the Ionian already show scars in the seagrass meadows, where anchors have scraped along the seabed. These scars take a long time to heal, and in some cases, the damage can be permanent. If you want to anchor in an area where seagrass is present, you need to make sure your whole anchor and chain is in an area of sand. You need to use a ratio of four times the water depth for the amount of chain that you let out. This means in five meters of water, you will need 20 meters of chain and more as it gets deeper. As there is no tide on the Ionian, your yacht will sit downwind of the anchor. Motor slowly upwind to check you have no seagrass underneath the whole way before dropping anchor over clear sand. Polarized sunglasses will help the crew member on the bow to see the bottom better and allow for better accuracy. From here, you can motor very slowly in reverse, going with the wind until you have let out enough chain. Once you have let out enough chain, gently check the anchor is holding using the motor and a transit on shore. If the anchor isn't holding, raise it and re-anchor. If the anchor continues to not hold, choose a different anchorage. So some of the key points around anchoring on seagrass are why we don't anchor on seagrass, identifying areas that have seagrass, making sure both the anchor and chain are on sand or mud, and understanding that if it's not holding, choose a different anchorage. A healthy marine environment means happy sailors. By being mindful of where we anchor and choosing eco-friendly practices, we can all protect these underwater oases and ensure healthy seas for generations to come. Subscribe and share.